Hey everyone, it's 12.17 in the afternoon on the 4th of January 2012. Happy New Year. This video is going to be all about testosterone. Like, how do you get started on it? Where do you get it? How much does it cost? Is it covered by insurance? Different, you know, delivery methods, etc. So, it's all about tea. I noticed a lot of people have some really basic questions and I thought maybe this video could just tie them all together. I hope this is helpful to some of you. Mandrews. So who can prescribe you tea? First of all, an MD. Not a PhD, not a psychologist. Uh, I've heard people, oh, can my psychologist do it? If you have a psychiatrist, they technically could because they're an MD, but generally uh, you can go to an endocrinologist who specializes in hormones. You can go to an internist, a general practitioner. Um, sometimes an, a gynecologist will do it. So anyone with an MD, a PhD cannot prescribe you anything. Uh, you can definitely go to them for therapy. You have to go to a doctor that does this. In a larger area, like an urban area, they often have clinics, which are much more affordable, easy to get into, and you don't have to go the traditional way of seeing a therapist for several months and getting a letter. So, how to get on it. There's a traditional way, which is, you know, not so traditional because it's different everywhere. Um, it's going to a therapist for three months, living as male, you know, documenting on paper, going by mail socially, at school, at work, with your friends, family, whatever. Then once you've done that, they will generally write you a letter, and then you're able to go to a doctor to actually get the testosterone, such as the endocrinologist, the internist, the GP, your primary care physician, whatever. And if you're in an urban area, you can often do what is called informed consent. It like Colin Lord or Lion Martin in San Francisco, or I went to Dimensions Youth Clinic. I didn't get started there, but I'm sure they have like a conformance model. So you do not have to go to a therapist with the informed consent. You sometimes take tests. Basically, you're signing something that says, you know, I know what testosterone is going to do to me. Um, you know, I'm aware of all these things that I'm going to undertake informed consent, you know, and you sign it, you can start, so you don't have to go through the therapy route. Some people are really opposed to therapy, others are not, like I still go to therapy even though, um, you know, I'm way past the stages of having to get letters and stuff, it's just good to sort things out. I think everyone should go to a therapist, you know, once in a while, once a year, once a month, whatever, whatever you need, once a week. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. A lot of people have this stigma, oh, you know, you gotta get on, you have to go to a therapist for hormones, and I understand, uh, where that comes from. We're not crazy, we don't have a mental kind of thing. But I think, uh, I don't really think you should have to go to therapy to get on hormones. I think, you know, if you really understand what you're doing, you should be able to do it. You know, people get t tiger stripes tattooed and other weird implants to look like animals. All we simply feel ourselves to be is the opposite gender or whatnot, and I don't know why we have to, you know, go through all that. But at the same time, transition is such a, you know, huge process that, like, it's good to talk to someone, it's good to sort things out and make sure you're absolutely ready. So I would want to go anyways, just to kind of, you know. But it is gatekeeping, some people can't afford it, some people don't have a knowledgeable therapist. You know, if you have a therapist that uh, doesn't understand things, it can be worse for you than, you know, actually going to someone good. I had a therapist here a couple of years ago, not the one I have now. I mean, he was, he, he meant well, he just did more harm than good by telling me things like, <laughs> that uh, a penis is such an important part of a male identity that he doesn't know how I live without one and all these things. So, you know, sometimes you just don't need to hear that, especially when your identity is more fragile and you're coming into terms with yourself and your body and your masculinity and your femininity and whatever else. Sometimes therapists aren't always great. I have a great one now. She's she's great. She understands trans stuff. She's you know, lesbian identified, so she's queer too. And you know, it's really great. We talk about all kinds of things from, you know, my lower dysphoria, which is getting better, to, uh, you know, relationships, to masculinity, to just a lot of things. And it's really good to sort things out. Back to the original point, you generally have to go see a therapist for a couple months, then they'll write you a letter. In other, you know, areas, mostly urban areas, where they have queer centers or LGBT centers or health centers, um, you can just do informed consent and get started that way. Okay, so what are the types of testosterone? And I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I did a video in February of last year about the different methods of delivery for testosterone, so I'll put a link there and you can go check that out. It's much more detailed. But therefore, the first one 
It's most common, it's injections. It's what I'm on right now. I'm on about 100 milligrams a week. A second kind is transdermal, so gels, creams, patches, you know, anything absorbed through the skin. I was on cream for raw, really liked it, just didn't do much for my voice, but I wouldn't mind going back. And then the third kind is sublingual, which is not as common in the U.S., you know, like taken orally, because tea can be pretty hard on the liver if taken sublingually. And the fourth is surgical implants, like tea pellets. And um, those can be pretty expensive, especially if they're not covered by insurance. So that's always a good option. It's just like a minor outpatient procedure. You go in, you get it put in, then you don't have to do a bunch of injections. So that's pretty cool. So check out my video on the different um, testosterone delivery methods, and that will have a lot more information in there for you. Where do you get it? You can get it at any pharmacy. You can go to Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, Publix, Safeway, whatever. Uh, you can also go to compounding pharmacies like Strohecker's. It's a really popular one with trans guys. It's out in Portland. Um, I used Apothecure for a while. Uh, they're in Texas. You can use any one. Like uh, I found a local one here in Jacksonville, Florida. Just had them make me some cream last August. So any, you know, you can find a local compounding pharmacy. All you need your doctor to do is talk to the pharmacist to figure out the dosage and percentage of whatever, you know, the cream or uh, perhaps injection, and the compounding pharmacy can make it for you. But I'll put a link to Stroh Hackers. I'm going to try to do a blog post with a bunch of information, and when that's done, I'll put it in the video info. But that won't be until later today or later this week. I've just got a lot to do. But yeah, Stroh Hackers is good. Used Apothecary in Texas, but you can use one anywhere. There's, you know, some in Vegas. There's, I've gotten one from like one in Wisconsin, I'm forgetting the name right now, but I'll look it up and find it and I'll put it all in the blog post. Yeah, you can get anywhere. How much does it cost? Well, I've paid anywhere from $5 to $105 for tea. When I lived in San Francisco, it was covered by Healthy SF, so I, you know, I only had to pay 5 bucks. But now that I'm back here home in Florida, I've paid as much as $105 at like a Walgreens. And that's why a lot of people go to Stroh Hackers, because you can get the prescription and then a bunch of needles for 80 bucks. At least that's the last I heard, it was 80 bucks. Uh, but now um, I got like a little prescription discount card, you know, and I'm paying about $80 at uh, CBS, which is not terrible, and needles are really cheap, and you can get them offline really cheap too. But be advised, not all medical companies will ship to certain states, so that can be a pain in the butt. But needles are really inexpensive. And I pay about 80 now. When I was on cream, I paid anywhere from 20 to 40 dollars per month. Uh, that was for a compounded cream. Things like Androgel Testum, which are name brand gels, cost about 200 dollars a month. Uh, the first prescription for tea I actually ever got, I was actually prescribed tea two months before I started in November, because the doctor I went to in September of 2005 actually prescribed me Androgel, but I just couldn't afford it at the time. You know, I was like a poor college student, and 200 bucks a month was really going to be hard to swing, and I didn't want to be able to, you know pay for it the first month or, you know, start a few months and then not be able to, you know, always come up with that 200 bucks and stuff. Um, it was much cheaper at the time to go on cream. I think I paid about $50 for my first jar of cream from Apothecary, but this is, you know, six years ago. But then I found a pharmacy in Wisconsin that did it for about 20 And then I found a pharmacy in Jacksonville that did it for about 30 So, you know, it's between about 20 and 40 sometimes 60 bucks for the cream. But if you get something name brand like Androgel or Testum, it's about... 200. And I don't know how much patches cost. I have no idea about the sublingual. I'm fairly certain the implants are over a thousand dollars without insurance, but I'm not sure how much people are paying with insurance. And that leads to the next one. So does insurance cover testosterone? That's another kind of hit or miss thing. It's like being trans and transitioning is different for everyone. It depends where you live, you know, whether you have to have informed consent or go to a therapist. When I started, I was listed as female under my mom's insurance, and they didn't cover it for me. But my dad is, you know, obviously listed as male, and his testosterone is covered. So if you're listed as male, it's a different story. I now would apply to get health insurance as male and hopefully have testosterone covered. But also some people are reluctant to list themselves as male on insurance in case they might ever want to get a histo covered, you know, because it's hard to be listed as male and get histos covered, even though it's not impossible. People have done it, definitely. Some health insurance does cover trans stuff. Not all, but there are some that does. You know, like Healthy SF is like a city-run program in San Francisco, specific there, and they covered it. And so, you know, some cities might have things that cover trans stuff. Like I know uh, Portland State, where I was looking to go to school, covers, you know, transition-related care, including, you know, percentage of surgeries. So that's really awesome. So it really just depends on the plan, just kind of like transitioning depends where you live. And all of this information, I should say, is relevant to the U.S. I, you know, this is where I transitioned in Florida and California. 
and I obviously don't have experience transitioning internationally, but a lot of other guys do, so hopefully they can weigh in or answer some other questions. Insurance, it's a hit or miss, and if you have any questions, let me know. Look for the blog post later uh, this week. Also, I've got another video in the word. I'm just kind of what to expect on the first year of tea. Uh, that'll be coming out in the next couple weeks. I've just got a lot of crazy stuff going on. Happy New Year, everyone, and hope 2012 is treating you awesome so far. I hope this was helpful and that you all have a great week. All right, peace.